In this video, we're going to take a look at a 3D model that I've been working on additively since 2016. And what I mean by that is, from 2016 to 2019, every time that I'd visit this site, the Medici Tombs in Florence, I'd take 50 to 75 photographs. I was never quite happy with the quality of the 3D model from photogrammetry, which is why I never finalized it. But with the popularization of 3D Gaussian splatting, I've been going back to old data sets that I thought could benefit from this technology. First, I'd like to thank everyone that's left a comment on previous videos. Your feedback and encouragement has been super helpful, and I really enjoyed hearing from everyone, so don't hesitate to leave a comment or shoot me an email. I'm trying a slightly new format with this video. I'll talk about the history and art historical aspects of the Medici tombs alongside the technology I use to digitize it because these are really beautiful sculptures in an equally stunning architectural setting both designed by Michelangelo. The Medici tombs are located in what was essentially the Medici family church of Florence, the Basilica of San Lorenzo, which we're looking at now. The structure that we see today was designed by Brunelleschi in 1419 who also famously engineered the dome of Florence's cathedral. However, by the time of Brunelleschi's death, only the portion of the church funded by the Medici, the sacristy, had been completed. And in 1442, the Medici assumed financial responsibility for the entire church. You'll notice that it has an unfinished facade. It's just bare brick. And this is because, in addition to the tombs, Michelangelo was also commissioned to complete the facade but it never came to fruition. Michelangelo's Medici tombs are located in this structure attached to the crossing of this Latin cross basilica called the New Sacristy, as it was built after Brunelleschi's Sacristy, which is today called the Old Sacristy. Let's start by taking a look at the camera positions in Agisov Metashape. This is the point cloud that I exported in Colmap format for Gaussian splatting but we'll look at the final mesh model in a moment. This project is about 800 images, all captured handheld with a Sony mirrorless camera and wide-angle lens, and we can see that there are three clusters of camera locations, roughly corresponding to the three sculptural groups of interest, with a smattering of other images of the ceiling and the room generally. Remember, I was originally taking these photos with the intention of creating 3D models of the individual sculptures using photogrammetry, not necessarily processing everything together. When it comes to photogrammetry, there are a few reasons to focus on digitizing individual parts of an overall whole rather than doing what I'm showing here, which is a project with all of the photos of this space aligned together. If this was a photogrammetry project, I would probably have three separate files or chunks at least, with each one dedicated to a statue group. This is so that I can focus on creating high-resolution, optimized chunks for 3D printing or import to Unreal Engine or Unity, rather than having a single, large 3D mesh model of the entire space, with statues and architecture combined, as we see here. Those individual assets can be touched up and retopologized in a digital sculpting program, or decimated and UV unwrapped much more easily when they are isolated, discrete models rather than an entire environment. It's worth stressing here that you'll almost never get a finished production ready 3D model straight out of a photogrammetry software. You'll need to do a certain amount of post-processing in a 3D program like 3D Studio Max, Maya, or Blender. How much depends on the quality of your photographs and your use case. For example, I could definitely reduce one of these statue models down to 200,000 polygons, export it as an OBJ or STL, bring it into a slicer for 3D printing, and it would work pretty well. But it'd be much nicer 3D print if I first smoothed the surfaces, gave it a perfectly flat base, and cleaned up any areas where there was no photogrammetry data, like we're seeing here. This is the photogrammetry mesh, reduced to about 2 million polygons and textured with 9 4096 by 4096 textures. In other words, it's probably on the upper end of what you'd want to use for a real-time application like VR or WebGL, like Sketchfab, for example. Now we're looking at the 3D Gaussian splatted radiance field running in real-time in Unity. 
Real time means that this is not pre-rendered video like we'll see in a moment. I'm recording the screen as I move the camera around within the virtual environment. The downside to this is that I might make mistakes with the movement, fly through a wall, or show an ugly angle of the model where there is no data, like here. Of course, it also means that I can explore this environment at will. I'm not constrained to a camera path or a predefined view. So if I want to move closer to something and look at it in detail, I can. This real-time Unity environment is where you can set up a camera path as well as combine other radiance fields or geometry. You can even render spherical video out of Unity, and if you want to see a 360-degree video rendered completely from a photogrammetry scan, check out the link to the Arena Chapel video in the description. In fact, that's one of the main reasons that I make these 3D scans and subsequent videos. It makes these artistic masterpieces and the fascinating history behind them much more accessible. In the typical art history textbook, the Medici tombs are relegated to three to five small images across two to four pages. But here we can experience and explore the space as it was intended, three-dimensionally and at scale. As I mentioned before, this is the so-called new sacristy of the Basilica di San Lorenzo in Florence. The Medici were one of the most powerful and wealthy families of the Italian Renaissance, and they spent a lot of that wealth commissioning art and architectural monuments in and around Florence. One of those monuments is this space, and the sculptures within it. Pope Clement VII, a member of the Medici family, commissioned Michelangelo in 1520 to design and construct a mausoleum to serve as the final resting place of Giuliano and Lorenzo de' Medici, who had died a few years earlier. The two grand tombs on opposite walls of this space depict the Medici dukes seated above reclining allegorical representations of time. The tomb of Giuliano de' Medici is ornamented with the figures of night and day, whereas Lorenzo's tomb is surmounted by dusk and dawn. There doesn't seem to be any deeper symbolism in the use of these figures on the respective tombs other than illustrating the triumph of the Medici name over the passage of time, and even the figures of the seated dukes are understood to be idealized portraits rather than faithful representations of what they looked like in life. The allegorical figures are particularly beautiful, and their twisting, elongated, and somewhat precarious positions contrast with the idealized figures of the dukes. Of note are night and dawn. Night can be identified by the clutch of poppies and the owl, nestled in the arch of her legs, which symbolize, respectively, sleep and death. Dawn appears sculpted in the act of awakening, his body starkly defined by the light of the rising sun, but his head still clouded by sleep and rough chisel work. All of these heavily muscled bodies are at once an ode to classical antiquity and very much within the Renaissance rhetoric of heroic yet fundamentally realistic figurative work. Now I'm going to stop talking for a bit and let you enjoy the rendered video of the 3D Gaussian Splat Radiance Field. I've tried to capture the harmony of the sculptural decoration within the architectural space and give you some views and details of the sculptures that you might not see even if you visited in person.
As always, if you made it to the end, thank you. And please do drop a comment if you have any questions or want to see more of something. I do my best to reply to everyone, and most importantly, I find people's suggestions and insights really helpful. I hope you enjoyed this very brief tour of the Medici tombs. I'm sure I haven't done it justice in terms of eloquence, but hopefully you've seen something new and beautiful, and if you did, come back next time. I'll see you then.